Alright, here's the deal. This is the ANET A8 Plus, a 3D printed kit with a heated bed, large print volume, and it's produced by Shenzhen ANET Technology Co. LTD, the producers of the notorious ANET A8. And something I said I would never review on the channel due to serious concerns around safety. So, why am I reviewing this 3D printer and why do I believe it's a huge step in the right direction for ANET? Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and this is the ANET A8+. Plus. A few weeks ago, Naomi got in touch with me and asked if I would consider accepting this machine for review from ANET. You see, as is the case with a few other Chinese manufacturers such as Creality, ANET has begun to conform to the open source requirements of the firmware and other features their machines use. And that's great news. So I agreed to check out ANET's new 3D printer, the A8 Plus. And one thing's for sure, despite what the name may suggest, it's got nothing in common with the notorious acrylic fire risk you may be familiar with. The A8 Plus can be had as a kit for as little as around 200 bucks US plus shipping or assembled for a bit more and the kit was well packed and had refreshingly decent instructions. No soldering required but you will have to handle mains and run an awful lot of wires so I'd recommend the assembly is left to those with some experience. This is especially true because the components are a strange mix of injection molded parts which are awesome and poorly 3D printed parts which suck. For sure, there's less 3D printed parts than previous kits at this price point, but there's no reason parts such as these very standard 8mm rod mounts should be printed at all. The wiring loom too seems to be adapted from their smaller machines with some lengths such as the power in wire and the second Z motor wire not being quite long enough to route correctly or cleanly, and the Y axis motor also spun backwards uh, from the kit initially, so that's an easy fix if you know what to do but it's going to be a real challenge for newbies. This can be changed in firmware or you just flip the pins on one of the coils, which is all I did and it fixed the problem. Keeping everything clean while still moving freely for the entire print volume, because it's quite big, is a challenge indeed. But in the end, this is the configuration I ended up with. Start the spool holder on the side with a little guide to guide it down to the extruder. Uh, the machine does actually come with a PTFE tube, but it wasn't long enough to comfortably route for my configuration. So I cut it off and what's interesting is on the extruder end, it hides the release tab so you, you can't actually release the PTFE once it's in. It's, uh, it's never coming out of that coupler. I mentioned this machine has a heated bed and it's huge at 300 by 300 millimeters with a sizable glass plate on top. You have tons of options here, but with careful bed leveling, fully manual mind you, I found that glue stick worked quite well. The system is 24 volts, which does help with heat up times, but it's still fairly slow to reach temperature compared to the lightning fast mains voltage bed heaters on some other machines at this size. Interfaces through this fairly typical LCD and click wheel, it seems to be rerunning pretty much vanilla Marlin, which is easy enough to use, but strangely ANET chose to magnetically attach it instead of uh, properly affixing it to the frame. Which I suppose the idea is you could pick it up and use it easier, but you have to run the cables really tightly to mount it, so yeah, weird. You load G-code via the micro SD card on the control board, and you have to be pretty careful not to drop it into electronics if you miss the slot, but if you wish you also could tether this machine to a PC or using something like a Raspberry Pi and Octoprint. As I mentioned, this machine shares pretty much nothing with the original A8. The frame is completely different and you'll notice it has these lovely aluminium extrusions replacing the fairly cheap but not very good acrylic laser cut frame of the A8. And what's really quite funny, and I find this, I personally find this funny, is that it has V-slot extrusions. And years ago, you had to fight tooth and nail to find V-slot extrusions, but this machine doesn't even use V-rollers. So it's like gone a full flip from V-slot extrusion being very difficult to get to now obviously being easier to get for ANET than just getting regular T-slot. I find that a little bit comical. Okay, onto some demo G-code. The files included are strange indeed. The print quality is decent enough, but they definitely have some surface artifacts, most evident in the ziggurat sort of thing and the Baymax model where the G-code starts each line because remember STL files have no true curves, they're made up with triangles. The machine is direct drive and perhaps tweaking acceleration and jerk settings might help, but I haven't gone that far. Worth also noting that the machine is pretty loud during operation, so don't expect silent steppers at this price point. 
but a lot of bearing noise too. And the rods are actually wearing a little uh, groove in them, which is a little bit disappointing because it means they're not case hardened steel, which is a shame because it definitely will affect print quality and bearing life over time. Now I'm not gonna ream ANET too hard over this because it could have been a supplier swapping them out without them knowing, but it's important to note nonetheless. From here, I put together my own Prusa Slicer profile to test my own models. I've linked my profile in the video description if you'd like to try it yourself. And the Gaia Anderson Cat printed really quite well. The notorious freestanding leg didn't break off and the supports pulled away cleanly with basically no stringing. But once again, a bit of surface texture. To get to the bottom of this, I printed this XY surface quality and uh, ghosting test, which I just threw together in CAD. And with such a big print volume and unsupported eight millimeter rods and tiny belts, it's not too surprising to see ghosting here, but that texture is a little bit unusual and I'm not 100% on what's causing it, but it would be nice to be able to remove it. This is a big printer and I wanted to print something huge without wasting kilograms of filament, not only because this machine lacks a filament sensor, but because I didn't want to wait a week for it to finish printing. So I have this lofted vase, which is now dustbin size. I ran into issues with the cables catching on the print while it was printing because there's no cable chain, so it's hard to keep out of the way. So cable tying it out of the way further does help. Is it pretty? No. Does it catch anymore? Also no. Smaller prints, however, really weren't up to scratch. I did suspect that the tiny unidirectional fan cooler was partly to blame, but what most people do, well, they'll, they'll buy this printer and they won't shy away from printing upgrades. So I do recommend this cooler from Cellil27 on Thingiverse. It made a decent improvement to my cooling in my tests and Anet even seems to think so, hosting this cooler and new rod supports on their own website as printable upgrades. Again, this open community participation is very welcome indeed. Speaking of tests, I've been working on a new clearance gauge that's quicker to print than my old one, and this printer achieved down to 0.3 millimeter clearances without issue, although down to 0.15 that was possible after breaking a few bonded areas, which is very, very impressive. I'll have this file available soon once I've tweaked it a little bit more. I'm not quite happy with it yet. Finally, how about a shout out to the 3D printing tabletop gaming community. I haven't been blind to how much the community has exploded and I'm absolutely in love with this cave entrance designed by Devin Jones as part of the OpenForge 2.0. Go check out his work, it's fantastic. And this print was completed in Polyarchmy FX PLA and honestly, it looks fantastic. If there are print artifacts, then this model geometry actually hides them quite nicely and the filament looks fantastic. So I would be very happy actually printing scenery like this on this 3D printer. And you could even go a fair bit larger with that 350 millimeter height limit. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for though, does the ANET A8 Plus have thermal runaway protection enabled? I'm not gonna shy away from this. The reason I never considered reviewing the ANET A8 8 original machine was the fact that although it was an immensely popular kit, it never came with thermal runaway from factory. So this means if the thermistor or heat cartridge comes loose during printing, the machine will try to keep heating it until it literally catches fire. And yes, they have caught fire several times. But this is a brand new machine and ANET now conforms to the GPL version three licenses set up by Marlin. So does it finally ship with thermal runaway enabled from factory? All right, time for the moment of truth. I've disconnected the heat cartridge from the control board. So I'm gonna go to prepare. Preheat PLA, preheat the hot end. It's gonna to try to preheat, but there's no heat cartridge, so it's not gonna heat up. Let's see if this thing kicks into thermal runaway. And there you go, guys. Heating failed, printer halted, please reset. That is a huge win. Thank you, Anet, thank you. So, there you have it. Yes, I'm as surprised as you are but I can actually recommend this machine for those of you who want a dead cheap, but fairly capable large volume 3D printed kit that would benefit hugely from a few basic mods and upgrades. When I say dead cheap, again, the price seems to vary 
quite wildly. You can get it DIY or assembled. So keep an eye out for flash sales where it tends to come down to the sort of 210 US mark, which is definitely a good deal. But if you're not a tinkerer, then no, it's not for you. Maybe the semi-assembled version, but in that case, I might be inclined to recommend spending a bit more money on something like a CR10 or similar. But if you have time and interest in learning how this 3D printer thing works and enjoy problem solving, remember that reversed axes from my kit, then you get a lot of 3D printer for the price. Full disclosure, this machine was sent to me free of charge from Anet for purpose of review and all opinions are my own. You can grab one for the links in the video description. And if you found this video handy or useful, then maybe chuck us a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one because it's my aim here on Makers Muse to empower your creativity through technology. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly, guys. Catch you later. Bye.